So hello and welcome back to Bronte Week. We are getting closer to the end. Today I'm going to be talking about my third favourite Bronte novel, which is The Brilliant Jane Eyre. Chapter 1. There was no possibility of taking a walk that day. We had been wandering, indeed, in the leafless shrubbery an hour in the morning, but since dinner, Mrs Reed, when there was no company, dined early. The cold winter wind had brought with it clouds so sombre and rain so penetrating that further outdoor exercise was now out of the question. I was glad of it. I never liked long walks. I love Jane Eyre so much. It feels like a crime that it's my third favourite Bronte novel because I love it so much and it's definitely in my top like 20 novels of all time but the other two ones that I'll be talking about tomorrow and the day after are further up in my favourite 20 books of all time but I think Jane Eyre, even if it's not my favourite Bronte novel overall, still has such a high place in my heart because through Jane Eyre, as I've mentioned before on this channel, it was the first Victorian book I read when I was 13 and I fell in love with it and I fell in love with the Victorians through Jane Eyre so even if it's not my favourite Bronte novel I have such sentiment mental love for it and such general love for it because it is brilliant it is so good you are probably more familiar with Jane Eyre than most of the other Bronte novels I've been talking about I think Jane Eyre possibly along with Wuthering Heights is the most famous Bronte book it has really gone down in the literary canon and history there have been so many like tv adaptations and films of it and it is it is beautiful and it's very good and it is well known so yes Jane Eyre is a young woman who is brought up partly by her aunt who is not very kind to her and then gets sent away to school at quite a young age she doesn't have a wonderful time at school either although she does make one friend there and then when she's about 19 she goes away to become a governess in this kind of lonely slightly deserted place this big house called Thornfield Hall in Yorkshire at the this place Thornfield Hall there is the master Mr Rochester there is his ward Miss Adele who Jane Eyre is the governess to and then there is a housekeeper and there are a couple of other servants around but it is kind of deserted and a lonely place Mr Rochester is away quite a lot various things ensue it's quite a kind of creepy mysterious gothic atmosphere going on and Jane Eyre kind of falls a little bit for Mr Rochester but he seems to be about to marry this other woman called Blanche Ingram and it's basically beautiful and lovely and I love it so much and it makes me so happy but dialogue in this book is just supreme like supreme like the dialogue between Jane Eyre and Rochester is just like the best literary flirting that has ever been written so there are so many so many things I love about Jane Eyre I don't really know where to start I love the character of Jane Eyre and I think I especially loved her when I was when I was a teenager and I was a you know I was an awkward quiet bookish teenager as someone that was quiet and bookish and didn't feel like I was always immediately liked and didn't know how to make myself immediately liked and often felt on the outside as a teenager to what was going on in like schools in friendship groups or whatever Jane Eyre like I really clung to as such a like a brilliant beautiful example of someone who is in pain but so strong and who is lonely but bears it so brilliantly and is still such a fascinating character of someone who is aware of their own failures or what is viewed in the eyes of the world as failures but kind of just goes on regardless I think she is such a brilliant character and as a teenager I think I very much identify with Jane Eyre I think I still do to an extent but maybe I think that was more pronounced when I was a teenager and I was maybe more insecure or whatever I love the whole atmosphere of Jane Eyre I love the kind of eeriness of the moor and of this empty house that on, so on the one hand a kind of creepy and at times kind of unsettling place but also becomes home to Jane Eyre in such a beautiful wonderful way that even when it feels this kind of like gothic big mansion it also feels like home and that is really wonderful and done so well I love Mr Rochester he's just what a, what a brilliant character he is wonderful and he's not nice and he's not like necessarily good but he's so complicated and wonderful and even when you don't like him you love him I love the plot structure of it I love the intrigue I love the drama I love the fact that when I first read it I just really couldn't see it coming at all what happens in the book and maybe if I had been older I would have done but at the beginning I, I, I didn't I love that it's so dramatic but also so personal I love the passion of Jane Eyre, especially in the dialogue I already mentioned how good the dialogue is but I just I think there are certain scenes between Jane and Rochester where the dialogue is so charged and so superb that it's just amazing it's just so good but I also think if you're new to Victorian literature it is a perfect place to start because it is so brilliant and emotionally engaging and just wonderful and I just I love it so much and aside from like the characters and the love story there is so many like fascinating themes of kind of madness of gender of identity of loneliness and self of what it means to find a home of what it means to be shut 
worked out of particular family situations and of class as well because Jane is that kind of other class she is a governess she is neither a servant nor a master she is somewhere in the middle and that is a complexity that is explored in a lot of Victorian novels and especially in fact in the Brontes novels. Now I've studied Jane Eyre a couple of times at university and there is just so much in it there is so much to talk about so many fascinating themes there's a lot of interesting issues about realism of you know is this a realistic book or not because there are gothic elements and there are at times things that seem not exactly supernatural but on the edge of possibility but they're told in this way that feels realistic and because the characters are so realistic you believe in it and that I think is beautiful so yes why is Jane Eyre not second or first in this list I think just because the next two books I'm talking about are so good I think there are a couple of things that are not niggles exactly but I struggle with the character of Adele because she at times feels like she's too forgotten, like she ought to be more present in the book than she is. Also there are a couple of moments in Jane Eyre which are really weird. There's a bit where someone dresses up as someone else and has a disguise and it just for me doesn't quite work in a way that I can kind of deal with if it's a little bit Shakespearean but it doesn't feel as believable and true as the rest of the book. I also I love the ending in many ways. There are a lot of brilliant things about the ending, especially in terms of like power dynamics and stuff. It's quite interesting, but at times feels a tiny bit forced and there are things that I'm maybe slightly less happy with. Before I go, I do have a couple of adaptations of Jane Eyre I feel like I should speak about. I haven't spoken about adaptations much this week because I feel like Bronte books are quite hard to adapt to screen and often Bronte adaptations to screen, but screen are either not done for the lesser well-known Bronte novels or they're not that good. However, the 2005 Jane Eyre adaptation with Toby Stevens and, and Ruth Wilson is just perfection. It's so good. It's, it's amazing. Go and watch it, please. I've also seen a really brilliant stage adaptation of Jane Eyre. They did one at the National Theatre a couple of months ago and I think it had come from Bristol and it was so, so good and the person playing Rochester and the person playing Jane Eyre was so, like, so good. Oh, it was brilliant. So yes, I love Jane Eyre very very much. Please let me know if you have read Jane Eyre and what you thought of it and I'll be back tomorrow talking about another Bronte book.